Dream Door Films, Life Update. just kidding so first of all I'm sorry that we haven't really been posting much I know like since we released silence I think we posted maybe three videos which is just you know that's not us and in this video I just want to address that you know what has been going on in the past few months basically in the whole 2022 uh, so what projects have we worked on what uh, what has changed and uh, you know some of our future goals as well for the next year so we're gonna break that all down so you guys know what the hell is going on with us because we actually got to work on some seriously sick projects and we went to some sick places and whatnot so actually a lot has happened behind the scenes which you of course didn't get to see and that is the reason for this little video and before we start with this video I just want to say that there's gonna be one big announcement at the end of the video and you don't want to miss it but okay, let's get back to the video. So at the start of 2022, we decided to go to Portugal together with Gunders and my girlfriend Katrina. So we just chilled there for a few weeks and we had to make this little video for this shoe company called A Leader. We actually made uh, multiple videos for them before, uh, like four or five videos. They've been a great brand to work with. And yeah, we just kind of walked around the city, explored it a bit and got some shots, so many shots of feet and stuff like that. And you know, nothing that interesting. Actually, when the Portugal trip was coming to an end, you know, we were, we were having a good time and whatnot, but I suddenly received a call from my buddy Alex and he's like, bro, do you want to come to Maldives? I'm like, sure, yeah. First of all, I, I wasn't too excited about Maldives themselves that much because I always view this place as, you know, this type of place where all the white girls and white boys go, all the rich Russian daddies and stuff like that. And, you know, it's nothing but, you know, to just sit on a beach and do nothing and stuff like that. So I was kind of keeping my, uh, keeping my expectations low, but I was actually surprised of how much I enjoyed the Maldives. And the main reason Alex invited me to come to Maldives was actually because, uh, you know, he's a buddy of mine and he's a skydiver. And there's this one company who came to Maldives and organized this big skydiving event where people jump out of planes and uh, land on these beautiful islands. And I just needed to capture some of that, you know, him chilling there, uh, him doing some jumps. Of course, I wasn't skydiving by then. But yeah, it was a good time. I met actually Jay Alvarez, which is also a friend of Alex by this point. I'm feeling super honored to have met him. And we actually shot a few clips with him as well. Uh, together with Alex, so I got to film that guy. Yeah, it was a great trip overall, and uh, I'd say my favorite part was just swimming in that blue ass water because, you know, guys, I love free diving quite a lot. And uh, the first jump I sent, I saw like 20 sharks in the first uh, first 10 minutes, which was actually a little dream of mine to swim with sharks in open waters, and I did that, and it was fucking insane. So yeah, Maldives, just you know, seven days and stuff like that, and uh, it was just a great time and I actually really enjoyed just sitting there and doing nothing of course I was filming still but you know the parts where I wasn't I actually really enjoyed just staying and existing there and just swimming around all day when you're there you really feel like the outside world doesn't exist and I think it's a great place to reset your thinking to kind of calm down a bit it's not a place definitely where I would go uh, I don't know, every year or stuff like that. But once in a while, I think it's a great experience. Obviously, it costs a shit ton of money. And of course, I didn't pay it by myself. But yeah, yeah huge opportunity. I loved it. After Maldives, we had to go to Dubai, like straight away from Maldives to Dubai to film, which is probably one of my biggest projects ever. It's the Kralo Trading Show. So Thomas Kralo, you've probably seen thousands of his ads by this point. Uh, he's also a friend of mine. I work with him quite a lot. And my girlfriend actually introduced me to him because she did the website and logo design and stuff like that. So yeah, I was editing his YouTube videos by that point for like a year. Uh, nothing that really interesting, it's just simple YouTube videos, nothing too crazy. Crawl Out Trading Show was a huge deal. So the basic concept was that Thomas did a giveaway on YouTube where he would select five lucky winners from all over the world to come to Dubai, experience all of this uh, millionaire lifestyle with helicopters, fancy cars, restaurants, and uh, fancy hotels and stuff like that. And uh, of course, learn trading as well because he's a day trader and he, uh, you know, he calls it Carlo Trading Show. But it's basically a full reality show with seven episodes, like each 40 to 50 minutes long. He actually sent me Too Hot to Handle as inspiration, so I had to research a lot of that. 
And yeah, it's a lot of interviews and action and activities and uh, also the you know more uh, boring stuff at the trading floor where nothing much is happening and you kind of need to you know wait to get a good shot. And yeah, so my job and Gunder's job was to capture all of that in the most cinematic way possible and create these seven episodes. So it was a lot of work, let's just say that. It was two weeks straight just shooting every day from 9 a.m. to like 10 p.m going to different places, driving the car around and getting there, getting there. And then uh, also some days where we're just filming the trading floor, a lot of waiting till something is happening in the markets and stuff like that. And we did the interviews and so much different stuff. Yeah, it was so exhausting. Uh, we also went to the desert to shoot some uh, doom buggy action and some sand bashing and stuff like that. So it, was, it was fun. It was a really fun experience and I feel, felt super uh, like humbled to that Thomas actually invited us to do it. And we will for sure shoot the second season as well next year. And the cool thing about it is that he's actually trying to pitch this reality show to Netflix. Like if we would shoot, uh, I don't know, either season two or season three, it could potentially go to Netflix and we would be filming that. Like, can you believe that? <laughs> it's crazy. But then it's probably a lot of thousands of dollars to upgrade uh, our camera gear because there are, of course, different requirements and we need a sound team and lighting team and stuff like that. Like this one, the first season, we actually did it all by ourselves, just two of us. And uh, yeah, it was a lot, especially with the sound, you know, we didn't, we didn't have um, like seven different lavalier microphones. We just used, you know, the shotgun there, the, the lavaliers there, and we just had to kind of mix everything up nicely. The reality show itself was pretty fun too. Like we had some good times with the participants. They're really cool people. And we actually had some big drama as well. Like Gunders almost got attacked <laughs> uh, d during one of the episodes and <laughs> it was, it was crazy because none of those people were actors. Like all of those emotions you see were pretty much real emotions. But the craziest and the most exhausting and the hardest part in general was editing all of that. Because damn, like the whole April pretty much, like 30 days, even more straight from 9 a.m. again to 10 or even 12, uh, midnight basically, I had to edit all of this myself because Gunders was mainly just my second videographer during the shooting, but I wish we would be editing all of this together, but yeah, it was crazy. The hard part was that after the trading show ended, I was actually kind of supposed to start working on it. The problem was that I didn't kind of know how much work it would be. I knew we had a lot of footage, but I, I didn't exactly know like how much time is it going to take because I never worked on a project of this scale. Like it's crazy, we had more than five terabytes of material. It's like 90 hours when you put it on the timeline, it's crazy. And yeah, so after the trading show, Alex was in Dubai again and we had to shoot, and we had to shoot some stuff for him. His project, uh, his NFT project actually, Divergence Key, and he had this idea to do a short film uh, where I would film it because Gunders was already on his way home to Latvia. And uh, yeah, this idea was that he's this uh, nine to five uh, guy who doesn't like his life that much. He's kind of depressed and he kind of gets this calling or feeling that he needs to escape this life and, you know, be his own boss and uh, yeah, just uh, enjoy life as he wants it to. And we actually got some actors who are not actually actors, but just some of his contacts in Dubai. We got a guy who's playing his boss at his office job and he's yelling at him and he's throwing papers and stuff like that. Then Alex sort of escapes and we had a chase scene in Deira, which is the old part of Dubai, not the fancy part of Dubai. We got these two big black guys dressed as FBI agents and uh, they were like chasing him down like uh, after the boss is kind of like get them and stuff like that and uh, we had an intense running scene through Deira and uh, we even got some locals to interact with us it was so funny so i'm running because these two guys are gonna kill you see, like, they look, they look fucking scared. <laughs> <laughs> so, they're chasing me and I'm gonna run and you guys are gonna block them. Like, no, no, yeah, not the you, block, you, you block the way. <laughs> you can punch him, but just once, okay? <laughs> <laughs> just one punch. And action. Okay, three, two, <laughs> one, <laughs> go. <laughs> guys, they're trying to chase me. These two guys, they're coming. <laughs> 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 Thank you very much. Oh, that was great. We got it. <laughs> Such a wholesome experience. I've never experienced that 
in my life, I think. It's just filming and smiling the whole time. It was so funny. Then we did some scenes with the dune buggies where he's running in the desert then and then uh, stealing the dune buggy and going forward. And, and then we will have to shoot some, um, uh, some of the remaining shots in a month or two. Yeah, <laughs> super interesting stuff. So after Dubai was done, it was a lot of work. And yeah, that's, the, that's the, pretty much the mistake I made that I should, should have started cutting the reality show by then, at least just cutting the material because it's so much material. So I kind of squeezed my editing time like almost by half, I, I'd say. Uh, so I had just a whole April to finish everything. The first episode was to come out at like April 3rd and the next one week after that. And then every other week we had a new episode. So pretty much I had less than a week to finish each single episode of this reality show. And of course, you know, he wanted me to send the video two or three days before the deadline. So the marketing guys can inspect it so we can make some changes or, or maybe there's some fuck ups in the rendering, something I didn't notice because for sure I, <laughs> there were some times where I just didn't notice some obvious things. I know there was this one half a second clip which is not color graded or something I missed. I, I don't know how these things happen, but you know, they do. They sometimes do, you can never be too sure. So it's always good to take precautions and that was a big lesson that I learned. Uh, sometimes, you know, when you're working f uh, a week straight on one episode, you're just so exhausted because you're working literally all day. I'm not even kidding, like all day, every day. Then, uh, you know, when you export that 15 minute episode, you kind of just quickly go through it and maybe miss some of the parts where you fucked up. So yeah, but one thing I really learned, one thing that I say, it's kind of a kind of an achievement for me is that I really learned to edit faster, like edit fast. Because imagine I would never, like a year ago, I would never think, even by then, I would never think that I would finish a 50 or a 40 minute episode in like four days. That includes like cutting all the material, like sifting through the footage, finding the best clips. That is finding seven to eight different tracks of music, finding some stock footage, uh, color grading each single clip individually because I like to complicate my life. And of course I didn't create freaking presets, which I should have done. That was intense. Like the next month, pretty much, I was feeling just exhausted. Like I, I just, I don't know, I didn't want to do anything. It was so much work. How do you call it? A little burnout, I would say, for like the next month. It was really hard to get my ass up and start doing something. But you know, I got through it, thankfully, and uh, delivered everything on time. Well, at least on the deadline. <laughs> uh, yeah, but still, amazing opportunity, learned a lot, did a lot, and uh, yeah, super excited for the next season as well. And while I was kind of editing the last episode, the episode number seven, which is where the, all the fucked up shit happens, uh, is when we actually got invited. We had to go to Sicily, where this one Italian guy, he actually saw one of our YouTube videos. He saw the video uh, two weeks in Italy, I believe it's called, where me and my girlfriend go to Italy. We explore these uh, places and it's just a cinematic old style, you know, recap of our little road trip, let's just say that. And he saw it and his wife is actually part Latvian and she looked at Katrina and she said, that girl is Latvian. Like she didn't know her, but she just, <laughs> she just thought. And immediately Stefano sent us a message and we got, you know, we got this job because he owns a luxury yacht renting company. So the, the, the idea was to go to Sicily, precisely uh, Aeolian Islands, which is this volcanic island chain next to Sicily, pretty close. The idea was to explore all of these islands in a period of like seven days. So that includes, so that basically means we were sleeping on the yacht for the whole seven days. We were staying on the water. We were sometimes, you know, porting and uh, climbing out and walking for like three hours and then get, get back on the boat. The problem was that it was really cold that season. He said like, he's never experienced something like, something like this in 40 years. It was like 20 to 20, 23 degrees or something like that. And the water was kind of freezing, let's just say that. Of course, that didn't stop me from doing some free diving still, but yeah, it was freaking cold. This whole experience of just, you know, being on a yacht 24 seven, it's just something else. It's something I never experienced. Uh, I, I think the meaning of life is actually to experience as many things as possible, whatever life has to offer. And uh, yeah, this was definitely a fun experience. So we had me and Katrina, Gundar Zanani. We had actually Ryan Shirley, who is uh, a YouTuber, doing these uh, cinematic travel videos, not travel videos, but uh, giving travel information, like top 10 places in Sicily, let's say that. And yeah, he was a super cool guy as well. And we got to meet and hang out and uh, there were some other people too. And uh, yeah, it was amazing. We saw the dolphins, they were like, the water was like completely flat. And uh, we saw like 20 dolphins just jumping in and out for like 10 minutes or 15 minutes. It was so good. He, Stefan also said like, that's something you experience once in a lifetime, it was crazy. 
and I actually finished the last episode of Crawler Trading Show on that boat, just still working, grinding my ass. It was tough, it was very tough. And if you think it ended there, it actually didn't because I get a call from my buddy Alex again and he says, bro, let's come to Bali, let's go to Bali. Now, Bali again is one of those places which I thought is a bit overrated, you know, because a lot of tourists go there, a lot of white girls and uh, all these people who just flex on Instagram and post pictures and stuff like that. And I was like, eh, no, no, I wasn't like that. I was like, oh, that's cool. But you know, again, I was keeping my expectations low, not thinking it's like, you know, the best place in the world and stuff like that. Uh, but yeah, again, I was super surprised. The Bali was actually freaking awesome. Bali was great. I think it has so much diversion. It has so much from nature. Like it has mountains, it has volcanoes, it has waterfalls, it has blue ass water, it has surfing, it has jungles and monkeys and stuff like that. So much, uh, so much stuff packed into this little island. And uh, my job there was just to do a recap video of Bali. What's up, monkey? Oh, <laughs> Thanks for pulling my hair. Usually I do that. <laughs> open hand, open hand, open hand, open hand. Relax, relax. Look at camera, look at camera. Down with security. Two monkeys. Monkey queen. <laughs> And uh, yeah, Bali was super dope, super affordable by the way, like scooter for $3 a day, full tank for like $2 a day, great meal with like two dishes for like five, six dollars, seven, eight, I don't know, but super affordable compared to Europe. And uh, the food is fantastic. The food in Bali is just mwah, so good. Uh, so yeah, we chilled there for, uh, for a month and we had like 10 days where it's just me and Katrina. So we just got our little, uh, actually really cool looking villa with a pool in a rice terrace for like 30 bucks a night. It's crazy, so much cool stuff. And uh, yeah, then this travel streak finally came to an end where we came back to Latvia and uh, finally got some rest and uh, yeah, just chill there. And moving away from my filmmaking life a little bit, I actually, when we got back to Latvia, I started go to skydiving school. I started, I always wanted to become a skydiver and that's what I did this year. And I'm super fucking proud. I have like 20 jumps in the mo at the moment. That's like in the period of one month, basically. So intense training, like every weekend I go there, I skydive and man, if you never tried skydiving, it's such a adrenal adrenaline rush that it kind of just resets your mind and if you have like any problems, any anxi anxiety and stuff like that, it's just such a good reset, reset switch, especially when you're doing it on your own and you're just gliding the parachute, doing whatever you want and stuff like that. It's, it's just amazing. <sighs> So I need 200 jumps to get my D license, I believe. That's when I can actually put uh, my GoPro on the helmet or my Sony A7S III on the camera. That could be freaking cool. So yeah, I'm hoping to get my uh, filmmaking into the air as well one day. This has just made me so happy in the recent month. It's, it's insane. I really love it and love to be a part of this community and just love doing something different. And hopefully my girlfriend would join me next year. Hopefully, fingers crossed. And during mid-July, we had one more project where uh, it's, again, through the contact of Alex. Man, it's, it's so important to just have good contact. Sometimes it's like you meet one guy, uh, one person who is like your client, and you just, you know, you, you're in good terms, good relationship, and uh, you just get so much more work, so much more opportunities, and it's, I think it's so important to keep uh, a long, uh, long-lasting relationship with your clients. You know, not just one-timers and stuff like that. I think it's so cool. Uh, so yeah, we got a chance to film Affiliate World Barcelona, which is this marketer conference where Alex actually, actually was speaking as well. We got to meet some cool people. Uh, again, some of my Latvian friends were actually there. I didn't notice they were doing photo photos and stuff like that. And uh, yeah, it was just two days of filming conference. Uh, obviously, events and conferences, it's probably the most boring thing you can ever film, I think. Uh, but it was fun. It was fun. Uh, never really explored Barcelona that much and uh, the video they wanted was kind of basic, I'd say. So it's, again, it's nothing impressive. It's nothing uh, I really want to show that much around because, you know, it's, it's, it's there and it works, and, uh, but it's nothing like, you know, like silence. <laughs> 
And then I got back, did some more skydiving, uh, went to some places, just chilled a little bit. And then I received, actually my girlfriend received a call from Stefano and uh, they got to meet, they got a, like a business meeting. And then we, uh, I met later as well, so it's three of us. And he, uh, he was actually, some years ago, he was riding his motorcycle in the car rally. So he's like, guys, do you want to come and film the car rally? Well, not the car rally, it's actually called Africa Eco Race, but the car has moved to South America, I believe, which is not how it was 10 years ago. So Africa Eco Rally is actually the original uh, Dakar rally. It's like the original trail, pretty much. He wants us to come to Africa in October to film all of that. So Katrina will uh, do social media stuff like TikToks, Instagram reels, stuff like that. And I would be uh, doing YouTube videos. Okay, let me stop you here for a second. So this whole life update video was super delayed. I was already supposed to publish it a month ago, but uh, it's basically because of the next announcement that I'm gonna tell you about in the next minute. But yeah, they hired us for the Africa Race Project. We already, we are back obviously. And actually, I already finished the first video for them. And if you wanna check it out uh, to see how we did, uh, you can go on YouTube and type in Africa Eco Race and you can find the video there. I think it's uh, pretty cool and we got a ton of dope footage and the whole experience, it, it was just a blast. And I'm gonna tell you more about it in an upcoming video. I'm planning to do like a little mini documentary about the whole thing and it's gonna be great. So yeah, that's pretty much it. Uh, that's not it, let's get back to the video. And yeah, meanwhile, Gunders, um, I don't know every project he uh, did this year, but he did a lot, a lot of commercial work. And I think he's actually progressed so freaking much like uh, he has this new mindset now that he wants to take a, a big chunk of his budget that he has for this video, uh, for this commercial, let's say, and he puts it back in the video, buying props, buying actors, buying makeups for the actors and locations and whatnot. And you can feel the money on the screen. Like this guy is just insane. So one last announcement that I teased you with the beginning, here it is. We are doing a color grading masterclass. It's something that we're working on right now and it's probably gonna launch soon. And super excited to do it. I actually wanted to do it for a long time, but I just kind of thought that I'm not ready yet. So this masterclass is gonna focus on just taking you from beginner to pro, uh, you know, teaching you all the tools that there is, breaking down the looks of silence, let's say, breaking down the looks of some films maybe, doing some sky replacements and uh, a lot of different stuff. We're gonna do a lot of different looks and uh, I'm just gonna show you guys my way of getting them. We don't use any LUTs, just gonna say it straight away. We always color grade from scratch, we're always, always working with log footage and uh, but, we're, but we're not just gonna cover log, we're gonna cover also phone footage, GoPros, drones, how to do masks and power windows and track some stuff and stuff like that, a lot of different stuff. So if you like our work, if you like how we color grade, if you like how our footage looks, and I see a lot of, a lot of you guys wanting, wanting us to do a tutorial for a long time. Uh, for those of you who are interested in this project, and you should be because this is gonna be just epic and it's gonna be amazing. And I think for you, it's gonna be an amazing uh, investment as well. We're gonna literally lay on the table everything that we have been learning for the past five to six years. So it's gonna be a huge shortcut for you guys and I can't wait to give something back, back to the community as well. And I'm hoping you're as excited as I am. So if you are interested guys, there's a link down below in the description where you can go and open up the newsletter page uh, and uh, you just input your email and sign up. And those of you who will sign up will get a huge discount when the masterclass is finally live, when it has launched and it's gonna send you a reminder as well. So make sure to sign up. And if you guys have any recommendations, if you have some wishes of what you want us uh, to teach you, or maybe some looks or some, some of our videos, which you really like how they look and just wanna know how it's done, Leave all of your recommendations, suggestions in the comments. Super excited to hear them. And yeah, that's pretty much it, guys. 
thank you so much for watching. And again, sorry for not posting that very much. And I hope uh, we're gonna finish this masterclass and then get back on track and actually start posting more of our short films and passion projects and stuff like that. We actually have a lot of ideas by this point and we will probably cook up something dope very soon. So yeah, thank you so much and you know the drill. Peace out.